Hello, welcome back to Bio for You. Okay, so this is the part two of the chapter eight for reproduction and development. Okay, so for this video, we're going to learn about 8.3 human reproductive system. For the first video, we have discussed about um, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction, and also we have discussed about uh, reproduction in plants until the part where we have discussed about double fertilization and so on. So for this video, this part of video, we're going to discuss about the human reproductive system, okay, which is 8.3. So first we're going to look at the structure of spermatozoa. So what is spermatozoa? Basically, spermatozoa is what is going to develop to become a sperm. So a, a, sperma, a spermatozoa, so we have the first uh, part of it is we call as the head it contains a haploid nucleus so this part is the uh, head it has a nu uh, haploid nucleus it is located at the, um, located at the tip of the head it is uh, acrosome so this part here is called as uh, acrosome uh, so acrosome it contains hydrolytic enzyme that will help the sperm to penetrate the egg during fertilization and then you have a middle piece, which is this part here, middle piece, where it contains many mitochondria. Okay, met, sorry, many mitochondria, uh, plural. So why you need to have a lot of mitochondria here is to supply the ATP for the movement of the tail during the sperm swimming towards the egg. And the next part is, uh, is the tail, the flagellum. Yeah, so it will originate from the central form from central and the function is for motility for the movement of the sperm uh, to swim to the uh, ovum okay so now we come to the part of this uh, interaction of the sexual life cycle of a human so um, we have the generation what we call as the diploid generation as a, a, a haploid generation so basically haploid is the sperm and the ovum so you can see this yellow line over here so after um, the part of fertilization so it will develop into zygote so zygote will become the diploid already so then the uh, life cycle will continue until the uh, adult male and female Okay, first we're going to discuss about the male reproductive organ. So why we discuss about the male part first? Because it is slightly easier, less complicated and much easier to deal with. Okay, so the male gonads itself, okay, the testes exist in pair. Yes, a, test, a normal testicles comes in pair. Um, and it will, the function of a testis is to produce sperm and secrete the sex hormone. So the function of testicle not just only to secrete uh, or to produce sperm, but remember also to produce the sex hormones. Okay, it is held outside of the abdominal cavity. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that uh, this organ is held outside of the body. It is not inside your stomach. It is not... Uh, it's not uh, somewhere hidden. It is, uh, uh, it is totally exposed. Uh, only uh, line with the scrotum. So, what is the function? Why we need to have this? I mean, not we. I mean, the male need to have this uh, in the scrotum. So, it needs to. It's going to bring down the temperature um, by less than two degrees Celsius than the normal body temperature. So, let's say your normal body temperature is um, thirty six point nine, thirty six point five. So, the temperature of the um, scrotum will be two degree lower. So, i.e. it will become 34 degrees Celsius. Okay, so um, inside the stasis, it consists of many long, highly coiled seminiferous tubules. So, these are the highly coiled seminiferous tubules. Inside the testicle, there are many of these uh, seminiferous tubules where we will find the sperms going to be formed or to be uh, produced inside these tubules, inside the lumen, inside the uh, opening of this tubule. So between the tubules, there are cells that are called as Leydig cells. Uh, so the function of Leydig cells is to secrete androgens, mainly testosterone. So uh, apart from this, um, uh, between the tubules, there are other cells. It's called as Leydig cells to produce testosterone. Sperms from seminiferous tubules will pass into the cold tubules of epididymis. Okay, here is the epididymis, this part here. 
where sperms become mortal. So originally when the sperms are produced inside the seminiferous tubules, it is non-mortal, means it does not move, it just stays still, it just follow and go with the flow. But once later it is uh, inside the epididymis, it will become activated and it will start to become mortal. Okay. So during ejaculation, the sperm will form uh, from epididymis will pass into vas deferens. So this is the vas deferens, the ducts, i.e. the saluran. Okay, that will um, they will deliver the movement of the um, the sperm and the uh, semen. Okay, to be ejaculated out. So here is the sequence. So um, the journey of the uh, sperm cell starts with the seminiferous tubule, and then it will go into this epididymis, and then it will go to the um, vas deferens, and then through the ejaculatory, uh, sorry, ejaculatory duct, and then um, finally from the urethra, released from the male body. So this diagram, um, you can see this one big, uh, this is a cross section of a uh, seminiferous tubule. You can see this one big circle over here. So this part, we can see there's small tiny uh, bristle like this uh, hair-like structure. These are not hair-like structure. These are not just a bristle. This is actually the tail of the, um, of the sperm. So uh, the process of uh, sperm formation we call it as, uh, as spermatogenesis. Sperm uh, genesis means production, so production of sperm is the process to produce male gametes in which spermatogonia divide by meiosis to form spermatozoa. So we originally have the spermatogonia, then it will divide by meiosis to form spermatozoa. This will occur in the seminiferous tubules in the testes and this only starts at puberty. The process of meiosis is uninterrupted, i.e. it is continuous. Later, we are going to compare with the female reproductive system, i.e. the um, oogenesis, where oogenesis, uh, the meiosis are interrupted. I mean, we know meiosis comes with uh, in two parts, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. For oogenesis in female, um, from from uh, meiosis one joining uh, moving on to meiosis two, there is a uh, it is not continuous process. So there is a waiting time. For male, the process is continuous. So that's what is meant by this sentence over here. So the cells found in the outer edge of the seminiferous tubule is called as primordial germ cell. So these are the cell that I'm pointing out is the primordial germ cell. The primordial germ cell will remain dormant until puberty, means the cell later will uh, remain dormant until uh, the male becomes uh, reach its puberty age. Shortly before puberty, these primordial germ cells will divide by mitosis to, sperm, uh, to form spermatogonia, it's a diploid cell. The spermatogonia is supported by a large cell called as Sertoli cell. So, um, as a spermatogonia divides, their daughter cells move inward and sperms are released into the human. So, we can see from this diagram, the development of the um, uh, sperm. After several, uh, after uh, first then uh, mitosis and then after it undergo a meiosis, then finally it become uh, spermatozoa. This spermatozoa or the sperm will uh, move and towards the uh, lumen. Lumen ni maksud dia uh, ruang ataupun rongga dekat tengah-tengah dekat lubang of this tubule. So, spermatogonia to N divide by mitosis to produce more spermatogonia and some remain as spermatogonia for the next cycle and others will enlarge and differentiate into primary spermatocyte. So, if you can see from this uh, tiny diagram over here, we can see uh, so this is the cell called as spermatogonia. Uh, spermatogonia, spermatogonia means it's a singular. So after uh, mitosis, it will produce more of the spermatogonia, and some of the spermatogonia will undergo uh, meiosis to continue the production of the sperm cell. So these are the steps for spermatogenesis. Okay, sorry guys, you have to memorize uh, these terms. Uh, 
there is no way of outdoing it you have to memorize it okay by heart okay so let's go through uh, in a slower pace and let us hope that you guys can digest uh, this information so we start with uh, each primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis one okay remember uh, that we start with spermatogonium undergo mitosis mitotic division means they about mitosis okay so some of it will continue to become the primary spermatocyte okay so then this primary uh, spermatocyte ni uh, dekat sini dia akan undergo uh, meiosis so of course dia akan start with prophase of meiosis uh, we start with meiosis 1 okay uh, so itu masa ini each primary spermatocyte undergo meiosis 1 to form two haploid secondary spermatocyte. So, the primary spermatocyte, it becomes secondary spermatocyte. Now, it's, it, uh, it is haploid. After it completes meiosis 2, so both secondary spermatocytes undergo meiosis 2, they will produce four haploid spermatids. So, this is what we call as spermatid. So, what is the difference between spermatid and spermatozoa? Spermatid has not developed into the full structure of a sperm cell yet. But spermatozoa, it has fully developed into a sperm cell where we have the head, the middle piece and the tail. So, um, the spermatids obtain nourishment from sertory cells. So, what is sertory cells? So, we can see here this is these are the cells uh, that still uh, we can find inside the uh, seminiferous tubule. So this sertory cell will nourish. Okay, nourish means bagi nutrient lah kepada spermatid ini. Spermatid ini supaya dia boleh develop to become spermatozoa, i.e. sperm cell. So the spermatids then undergo cell differentiation. Okay, we call it spermiogenesis. So most of the sperm's cytoplasm is discarded by the sertory cells, finally become matured sperms as they develop, they move inward towards the lumen of the tubule. And sperms are later released into the lumen. Lumen ni mana dekat tengah-tengah, dekat lubang of the seminiferous tubule. So here are the quick, uh, quick review of the sequence. So we first have the spermatogonium undergo mitosis. So, what is this um, turn back arrow means that some spermatogonium, okay, once they undergo mitosis, daripada satu spermatogonium, it becomes two. So, from the two of the spermatogonium, one or some of it will continue the process, become the primary spermatocyte and so on, but some of it will remain as another spermatogonium for the spare for next uh, cycle, okay, to produce the next sperm uh, in the future. Okay, so when uh, one we has once we have the primary uh, spermatocyte uh, is a diploid, it will undergo the meiosis one. So now it become haploid. It's called as secondary spermatocyte. So bear in mind, primary spermatocyte diploid, secondary spermatocyte is a haploid. Okay, after that uh, it completes the meiosis two. It becomes uh, four spermatids. Of course, it is haploid, and through the process of spermiogenesis, it will become spermatozoa, i.e., the sperm cell itself. So spermatogenesis. So what? Well, okay, what I meant by the lumen earlier. So this uh, this big circle here is actually. Um, the seminiferous tubule. So, sertory cells is the cell that bathes the bathes masih membasuh atau mengelilingi that surrounds the uh, spermatogonium that surrounds the uh, spermatid and etc. So, here are the lumen where next the sperm will be released. Okay, so now we're going to look at the hormonal control of the male reproductive system. So, um, after we have understand how the sperm can be produced, and now we're going to learn about how can it be controlled. So, it is obviously controlled by hormones. So, now we're going to learn about the hormone in male. So, onset of puberty, manis masa budak ni, um, semasa dia remaja dia menjadi uh, matang, dia menjadi... Um, Irish puberty, okay, puberty also we call as uh, balik, okay. So the hypothalamus, hypothalamus is uh, 
small part of the brain, inside of the brain, will secrete the gonadotropin releasing hormone, GNRH. GN stands for gonadotropin, RH is releasing hormone. So the GNRH, okay, so this one, okay, so these are the hypothalamus inside the brain. It will produce the uh, GNRH hormone. Then this GNRH hormone will stimulate anterior pituitary gland to secrete gonadotropin. So pituitary gland ni ada dua, satu uh, anterior, satu lagi posterior bahagian belakang. So uh, yang anterior pituitary gland ni dia akan produce um, uh, gonadotropins. Okay. So what are the gonadotropins? They are follicle stimulating hormone FSH, this one, and also luteinizing hormone LH, which is this one. So both hormones travels. Uh, to testis through blood maknanya hormon-hormon ni akan pergi uh, ke testis melalui saluran darah so dia akan pergi ke testis testis is the uh, target organ for these two hormones so then we're going to look at what this LH and FSH do so LH or is called as luteinizing hormone it will stimulate the Leydig cell to secrete testosterone Okay, sounds familiar, right? Yes, this is the uh, common hormone found in male. Okay, so there is the function of LH. It will stimulate Leydig cell. So, however, FSH will stimulate Sertoli cell to secrete androgen binding protein or ABP. So, this will later increase the concentration of testosterone in tubule to stimulate spermatogenesis. So, now we know the function of this hormone testosterone to stimulate spermatogenesis. What is spermatogenesis? It is the process of the sperm production. Genesis means generate, generate means hasilkan, hasilkan sperm. Um, so FSH, LH and testosterone all stimulate the spermatogenesis, the production of the sperm. So now we look at the regulation of this uh, hormonal by negative feedback. Okay, what does it mean? Means um, hormonal regulation ni pengawalan hormon lah. So bila kita kawal, uh, kenapa uh, hormon uh, regulation ni penghasilan hormon ni perlu dikawal? So um, penghasilan hormon ni perlu ada masanya uh, di berlaku, ada perlu masanya di uh, berhentikan. So tak boleh sendiri so on, sahaja kan? So that will create another problem. Okay, so let us have a look. Sex hormone concentrations are regulated by negative feedback mechanism. Okay, so uh, testosterone acts on hypothalamus. So uh, we see here um, testosterone. So it will act on the hypothalamus. So here and here, this one specifically hypothalamus, uh, and also anterior pituitary gland to regulate the concentration of GnRH, uh, FSH. Dan juga LH, this GnRH, FSH and LH. FSH secretion is inhibited mainly by inhibin secreted by the Sertoli cell. So we have here um, uh, anterior pituitary gland, tadi dia hasilkan FSH. So FSH ni akan menyebabkan uh, Sertoli cell untuk uh, Uh, trigger the process of spermatogenesis okay and also this sertoli cells akan hasilkan hormon uh, inhibin this hormon inhibin akan inhibit yang simbol negatif telah ni maksud inhibit akan stop stop anterior pituitary gland punya function daripada menghasilkan uh, FSH so FSH sorry FSH itself stimulates uh, inhibin secretion okay so itulah maksud dia lah So here are the list of the hormones, uh, rows of hormones in spermatogenesis. So kalau GnRH dihasilkan oleh hypothalamus, function dia to stimulate anterior pituitary gland to secrete FSH dan LH. Uh, whereas for FSH secreted by pit, uh, anterior pituitary gland to stimulate certain cells to secrete androgen binding protein. For LH, uh, secreted by the anterior pituitary gland to stimulate Leydig cell to secrete testosterone. Whereas the testosterone function to uh, secreted by the Leydig cell to stimulate spermatogenesis process. So, bila ada testosterone, baru ada proses spermatogenesis. 
Okay, inhibin pula dia dihasilkan by cell to cell untuk inhibits. Inhibits means stops anterior pituitary gland from secreting FSH daripada penghasilan FSH. So, FSH, LH and testosterone all directly or indirectly stimulate spermatogenesis. So, here is a quick recap for the function of sertary cell. So, is to provide nutrients for the developing sperm. Maknanya, sperm yang tengah besar dapat nutrient daripada sertary cell. So, it also, however, secret inhibin to regulate spermatogenesis process and other hormones. Uh, maksudnya, uh, dengan penghasilan inhibin ni dapat mengawal proses spermatogenesis ni. Bila masa diperlukan untuk hasil spermatogenesis, untuk buat spermatogenesis, then uh, uh, animal will continue. Or if it needs to stop, then the inhibin will stop. And this will give support and protection, the function of sertary cell to give support and protection to spermatogonia during the development and remove excess cytoplasm as spermatids develop into spermatozoa. Slightly typo over here. So that's the function of sertary cell. So function of lady cell, uh, secret androgen, uh, mainly testosterone, which is responsible for primary and secondary characteristics of male. So, what is primary and secondary characteristics of male? So, uh, characteristics of male is such as the uh, the formation of the uh, mustache, uh, beard, uh, the rough voice that the male have, and all the physical features that a male uh, uh, should have. Okay. So now we move on to the um, uh, into this uh, structure of secondary usad, i.e. now we are going to look into the um, oogenesis. Oogenesis, now we are going to move on to the female part of the um, development. So secondary usad, what is secondary usad? Apa yang dimasukkan secondary usad ni? Okay, pendek cerita dia macam ni lah. Um, in male, we produce a sperm. In female, they, they will later eventually produce ovum. But before they could reach ovum, there is a stage. One stage before it forms ovum, it is a stage where we call, the cell is called as secondary oocyte. Okay, so the cell only will be called as ovum after the process of fertilization. So, maksudnya pendek cerita macam ni. Kalau dalam male, the production of sperm, they can terus jadi matang continuously. I mean, the sperm can mature and uh, the process of sperm maturation process will be continuous, terus. But however, in female, um, the production of ovum tu yang uh, yang mature, dia tidak akan berlaku sehingga berlaku yang fertilization. Apa itu fertilization? Sehingga lah uh, sperm tadi tu datang untuk fertilizekan dan senyawakan to bring alive the secondary oocyte to become uh, to become ovum. So, maknanya kalau um, uh, if let's say the female never gets married and never have um, uh, never have the uh, what we call uh, the process of fertilization happen in her body, so that female, technically speaking, never produce or never generate an ovum. So, dia hanya ada secondary oocyte sahaja. Okay, so now we have understand what is secondary oocyte. Now let us going uh, look at the structure and later we get to study the uh, oogenesis. Oogenesis means the production of this oocyte. Okay, so beneath plasma membrane of secondary oocyte, there are lots of small vesicles called cortical granules. Okay, so um, in this diagram, it does not show uh, directly, but what I can tell you is that uh, let's say, uh, sorry, this is the secondary oocyte, the one that I'm um, making circular now. So uh, the one that I'm directly pointing at the moment, this is the uh, this is the plasma membrane, beneath, just beneath, just underneath this plasma membrane where we can find the cortical granules. Okay, uh, any additional membrane outside of the plasma membrane. So this is the plasma membrane. Additional membrane one is called as vitellin membrane. So ada satu lagi small membrane dipanggil sebagai vitellin membrane. So between plasma and vitellin membrane, there is a fluid filled uh, space, uh, sorry, fluid, yeah, fluid filled space known as privitellin space. So, this only uh, extra information for this point. Okay, so the one that we're going to focus is that outside the vitellin membrane, there's a thick glycoprotein jelly coat 
called zona perioxida. So mana dekat luar, uh, so dekat sini adalah plasma membrane dia. After plasma membrane ada satu lagi membrane nama dia vitellin membrane. After vitellin membrane, then we have this thick zona perioxida, the one that you can see. Um, dark in blue color over here. So this zona periosteal, the structure is a thick, very tebal um, glycoprotein, a jelly coat. Manis structure itu macam jelly. Okay, so it's called as zona periosteal. So um, zona periosteal is surrounded. Okay, you're missing D over here. Typo. Surrounded by layers of follicle or granulosa cells called as corona radiata. So the one that is a yellowish uh, structure uh, here is called as corona radiata. So that's how that's how complicated the formation of this secondary oocyte. So we have the secondary oocyte being layered by the uh, vitellin uh, we have the plasma membrane then it's being layered by the by vitellin membrane then it is being protected again uh, with zona periosteal. In addition to that we have the corona radiata to protect the um, uh, the secondary set. So, so from here we start to understand that um, daripada nature lagi memang uh, lah perempuan ni kan kita memang biasa uh, lindung dia berlapis-lapis lindungan dia. Uh, kalau lelaki tu memang tak dilindungi langsung lah. Dia memang dia, dia akan bebas uh, uh, berenang macam tu saja, okay uh, dengan wildly macam tu uh, so dari segi nature dia lah begitu Okay, so um, this is the structure of the female reproductive organ. Alright, so uh, we have here, uh, we have uh, this part is uh, what we call as the vagina. So uh, I don't know, I don't want you guys uh, to be uh, confused with this um, structure since you guys are all a biology students. So you need to understand this structure uh, very carefully and uh, understand it very well. So after we have the vagina um, area, then we have this part. Okay, this one uh, is totally inside of the female's body. So this one is what we call as the uterus. So uterus is a big structure over here. Uterus is um, attached to a fallopian tube. So this one is fallopian tube. Okay, not being labeled over here. Uh, also called as the oviduct. So um, after this fallopian tube, uh, where we have the ovary. So ovary is over here. It's attached by uh, another structure here to the uh, uterus. So the development of the uh, secondary oocyte occurs here. So here is the circulation. This is the cycle of the production of the secondary oocyte. So we have from uh, one simple cell here developed into a larger cell, more complex cell, larger it become enlarged, and finally. Um, you can see that this, this that there is this uh, small white dot over here, the small white circular structure over here. That is the secondary oocyte. Later, it will be released uh, through the process of ovulation. Okay, um, so after the process of ovulation, the secondary oocyte is released. Okay, um, into this fallopian tube. Here, uh, you can see um, that this small structure is the uh, sperm. Only after the sperm fertilize the secondary oocyte now this only then the secondary oocyte is called as ovum so other than that means other uh, if the secondary oocyte did not get fertilized by a sperm so it will never turn to become ovum it will remain as secondary oocyte and until it uh, later become degenerated So here is the simplified diagram of the uh, secondary uh, oocyte. So okay, so we start from the uh, inside and out. So this is the secondary oocyte, the one that is pale pink over here, structure all this the secondary oocyte. We have the nucleus uh, haploid, contain only haploid number of chromosome, and we have the plasma membrane, which is this uh, black layer here. And then we have this pre uh, vitellin space, uh, ruangan antara plasma membrane and another membrane called, called as vitellin membrane outside of the vitellin membrane we have the not we i mean the secondary oocyte have the zona pellucida so the one that is pink in color and on top of that i mean um, uh, after the final layer is the uh, layers of granulosa cells that will form the corona radiata so many layers after layers after layers after layers until you finally reach the um, secondary oocyte. This first polar body, what does it mean? Okay, remember during uh, meiosis, uh, the 
once the process of uh, meiosis uh, completed, uh, no, uh, end of the process meiosis, uh, there is a first polar body that will be produced, and later this polar body will be disintegrated, means I can dimuslahkan. Okay, so here is the female reproductive organ. Um, I've mentioned earlier, so so this is the uh, vagina area where um, the sexual intercourse process will take place, and this is the cervix. Okay, so maybe you have heard the the term before, uh, cancer cervix. So cancer pangkal rahim. Yeah. So this uh, in Malay, this is what we call as the rahim. So pangkal rahim means the base of the rahim, which is the cervix. So uh, orang kampung saya akan panggil cervix. Uh, orang kampung koram mungkin akan panggil uh, pangkal rahim lah. Uh, okay. So um, rahim or ada dalam cerita nama uh, video uh, TV3 or something kan Rahim tanpa rahimah atau so whatever semua So this is a rahim So this is the uterus Okay, uterus So uterus So uterine wall is this thick structure over here And the endometrium wall is this wall here inside the uterus So dalam uterus ni pun dia ada macam cavity, dia ada ruang lah So uh, ruang tu paling dalam sekali layer lapisan tu dipanggil sebagai endometrium so um, this oviduct, or call as uh, also called as the Philippine tube, um, that one they will receive this. The one that will receive the uh, secondary oocyte ejaculated during the uh, ovulation. Okay, so ovary are over here. There are two ovaries, left and right. Okay, so the female gonad ovary exists in pair, just like in male, the testis also comes in pair, uh, flanking the uterus on each side, flanking maksudnya side by side lah, mengeriling, uh, berada di sebelah, held in place within abdominal cavity by ligaments, so this is the ligaments, the size and shape almost uh, like large almonds, size dia hanya macam sebesar almonds sajalah, so it's not that big anyway, okay. So, the oviduct or the Philippine tube, as I mentioned earlier, extends from uterus, the uh, bersama daripada uterus, towards a funnel like opening at each ovary. Okay, uterus is a pear shape, okay, uh, pear shape berbentuk macam uh, pear, uh, tapi it's a fist size, maksudnya size of a fist, iaitu uh, penumbuk, is located centrally in pelvic region, main bahagian uh, pelvic. It has a thick wall of smooth muscle, okay, uh, and its inner lining is called as endometrium. So, inner lining, inner lining atau pelapisan dalam ni dipanggil sebagai endometrium. So, um, in this in this uh, diagram, it shows you the female reproductive organ. So, this is the enlarged uh, diagram of the ovary. Okay, so let's have a look here. Um, the function, uh, the function of the ovary is to produce female gametes and sex hormones, i.e. estrogen and progesterone. And ovary contains many follicles. So we have here many follicles inside here. And the growth of the follicle will start uh, with the growing follicle. We have the primary follicle and then uh, later we have the secondary follicle and etc. Okay, so um, this diagram is only uh, a general diagram showing you the structure. Okay, each follicles contain one primary oocyte only and surrounded by granulosa or follicular cells. Okay, so first we have the primordial uh, follicles and then uh, from the primary uh, primordial follicles, uh, it becomes uh, primary follicle. After primary follicle, develops into secondary follicle and then develops into tertiary follicle and last but not least, uh, it will become the graphian follicle so graphian follicle so inside this follicle where we will find later the oocyte the secondary oocyte okay so oogenesis okay so previously we have learned about spermatogenesis so spermatogenesis is process of uh, the generation uh, generating or gener uh, producing sperm so for producing ovum is oogenesis so the process to produce female gametes in which oogonium divide by meiosis, okay, oogonium divide by meiosis to produce ovum. But remember, uh, to produce ovum, you need to have the process of fertilization. 
So this process occurs in ovary. So it will start before birth and continue at puberty. Means this process con uh, started even before the baby girl was born. I uh, inside still inside the mother's womb. When dalam uh, kandungan lagi dia dah mulakan proses uogenesis ni. Uh, macam biasa dah perempuan kan dia memang suka bersiap awal. Dia suka uh, ready awal. Uh, siap uh, ready, ready awal tapi tak siap-siap. Uh, kalau lagi siap cepat terus siap. Ah, macam itulah So it starts even before birth And continue Ah, Dah starts before birth Dan dia sambung at puberty Mereka dah puberty Baru dia akan uh, start So macam sama juga macam perempuan Dia ready nak beli something Atau ready nak buat something Okay dia start Dia plan dulu And then dia tunggu Dia dah ngam Baru dia continue <laughs> At puberty After dah lama ah, Kalau lelaki plan nak beli kasut Okay nak beli kasut Ada duit Ada pergi mall Mall Jumpa beli Pergi out Contoh macam tu lah Kalau perempuan daripada 3 bulan lepas Dia plan dulu nak beli kasut Ada, ada duit Okay, dah pergi kat kedai Tengok dulu tunggu mana kedai yang jumpa Baru dah dia beli Kalau dia jadi beli Kalau Okay So the process of meiosis is interrupted by resting period Nampak resting period Resting period apa? Waktu dia menunggu So uh, if we refer to this diagram here So this process of um, mitotic division ni Primordial germ cell to become uginium So uginium uh, divide by mitosis to uh, produce primary oocyte uh, Ni berlaku present at birth Ni in embryo Maknanya semasa baby itu Baby perempuan tu dalam, uh, dalam embryo Dalam kandungan ibu lagi Dia dah mula buat proses ni dah hmm. Okay Until then later Bila dah uh, puberty Baru dia akan start dengan prophase uh, Sama lah selepas prophase 1 Okay So then the primordial germ cells Will differentiate into uogenia Okay uogenia which is uh, this one okay sorry uh, ah yeah. ya this one okay so after repeated mitotic divisions okay ugonia differentiate to form primary oocyte so ugonia yang banyak ni akan menjadi uh, primary oocyte so near birth maknanya baru nak dia lahirkan baru all primary oocytes have started meiosis 1 maknanya baru dia nak lahir itulah baby tu nak lahir Bukan baby yang bakal dihasilkan tau Ni, ni perjalanan cerita proses uogenesis ni Yang akan dialami oleh perempuan tersebut Start daripada sebelum dia lahir lagi Ini maknanya baby perempuan ni baru nak lahir Tapi proses uogenesis dia dah bermula dah So itu maksud dia kat sini Near birth all primary oocytes have started meiosis 1 But arrested at prophase 1 At birth until puberty Bila puberty baru dia sambung kerja tu balik Okay. So some primary ni ada extra info dekat sini So some primary oocyte remain arrested at prophase 1 um, For 40 years or more I.e. before menopause So dia boleh tunggu sehingga 40 tahun guys uh, Okay So at birth uh, Total number of primordial follicle varies from 700,000 uh, to 2 million So during childhood Most primary oocytes degenerate Okay Hanya tinggal lebih kurang 400,000 remains at Puberty Okay So at puberty Uogenesis will continue So only several primary oocytes develop Okay about 5 to 15 But usually only one will reach Will reach full maturity So maksudnya uh, during puberty This uogenesis ni uh, This process of uogenesis ni Akan continue uh, Tapi hanya several primary oocytes Hanya several sahaja of this primary oocyte Okay, uh, yang akan develop about 5 hingga 15 Usually hanya satu sahaja akan sampai kepada full maturity Maturity So the primary oocyte completes meiosis 1 to form two daughter cells Okay, this one and this one uh, The secondary oocyte Okay, uh, later will become ovum oh, Sorry, this one is the secondary oocyte And the other one is the first polar body Okay Unequal cytokinesis occurs to produce a large secondary oocyte and a small only polar body, the first polar body. The secondary oocyte then begins meiosis 2, okay, meiosis, begin meiosis 2, then uh, but arrested at metaphase 2. So, dia tunggu lagi. So, macam perempuan biasa, dia tunggu lagi. Ha, dah start tapi dia tunggu lagi. Arrested at metaphase 2. Nak tunggu apa? Kita okay, tengok sekejap lagi. Okay, during ovulation, uh, maknanya dah bila berlaku ovulation, the secondary oocyte is released from ovary. Okay, 
if only a sperm penetrates uh, the secondary oocyte, barulah the secondary oocyte will complete the meiosis to so mana baru nak lengkapkan meiosis tu kalau yang lelaki tadi tu daripada awal lagi dah start terus sampai habis okey so to produce a large ovum and the second small polar body if sperm does not enter secondary oocyte secondary oocyte in ovida will degenerate so extra info here only 500 400 to 500 secondary oocytes will be released during the reproductive years so maksudnya apa ni okey maknanya lebih kurang 400 hingga 500 secondary oocyte saja akan dihasilkan uh, dalam sepanjang hayat uh, perempuan tersebut untuk dirilis uh, during ovulation so that's why lah perempuan dia akan menopause so dia akan release one secondary oocyte per month so yeah roughly about 400 to 500 months. Okay, so sebab itulah sehingga satu ketika umur sahaja. So, this slide is a good summary slide to show you the process of oogenesis. oogenesis. So, let us go through together. So, remember this first part here, it occurs before birth, i.e. before the female was even born. Still in the mother's womb. Maknanya semasa perempuan tu masih baby, masih lagi, bukan baby, belum lahir lagi, masih lagi dalam kandungan ibu dia lagi, dia dah buat mula, dah mula buat projek, uh, dah mula buat Uh, this uh, progress okay. So start daripada primordial germ cell In embryo Maksudnya semasa masih embryo Mengalami differentiation To have uh, oogenium So then this oogenium uh, Differentiate uh, An onset uh, For I mean of uh, Meiosis 1 Then it will produce a Primary oocyte Okay Arrested Arrested ni bukan yang tangkap Maksudnya dia stop At prophase 1 Sampai before birth And then next Once Just soon Before uh, Just soon When the baby is about to be born, okay, so they can start the next stage uh, at uh, until it reach at puberty, so one each cycle, many until menopause. So the completion of meiosis one and onset of meiosis two, many nak siapkan meiosis one dan nak mulakan meiosis two berlaku semasa puberty dan hanya satu ovum setiap bulan. Uh, so maknanya kalau nak nak kata sikit macam perempuan a uh, benda nak cakap sini dia tak boleh multitask sebulan hanya satu kalau lelaki a uh, you boleh refer dekat dalam slide ni tadi ada extra info dekat dalam dalam video ni ada extra info yang uh, purple tu sengaja saya tak bacakan a um, for spermatogenesis satu hari dia boleh hasilkan berapa satu bulan boleh hasilkan berapa dan sebagainya perempuan satu bulan satu only one I cannot multitask kalau lelaki boleh banyak-banyak multitask okay. So I don't mean to be sexist I just use this example so that you guys can easily memorize And um, easily understand this uh, concept and process okay. So again it is arrested at metaphase 2 um, Until it only reach meta, uh, Until it is called as secondary usat So ingat eh metaphase 2 Dia tak siap lagi pun Tak masuk lagi pun anaphase 2 So bila dia nak start anaphase 2 and telophase 2 and etc only after the process kalau berlaku proses fertilization entry of sperm and berlaku yang fertilization barulah the second oocyte dipanggil sebagai ovum and producing the second polar body So okay on this slide we're going to compare spermatogenesis and oogenesis side by side okay Um, of course, some of you will be happy. Some of you may not be happy because yep, the male will be more happier to be compared with the girl, uh, in this context only in this context. Okay, so for spermatogenesis, uh, we going to uh, we have understood that once the the process begins uh, at puberty, mana akhir balik, so this process of spermatogenesis, the sperm production will start and continuously um takes place. Um, day in day out and continuously okay so production of sperm uh, is uh, uh, it happens uh, many in one day and everything so but the production of uh, for the process on the other hand for oogenesis okay it starts um, much much more earlier in embryo means uh, during the uh, the girl still uh, in embryo state dalam kandungan ibu lagi dah start buat mula proses ni and then arrested and then stop Okay, so at puberty baru dia start balik separuh. Tapi tak siap lagi. Bila nak finally siap, bila kalau ada berlakunya fertilization. Okay, baru dia complete 
uh, the process of meiosis tu tadi. So kalau yang in male spermatogenesis terus siap. So this another slide mm, just showing you the comparison between spermatogenesis versus oogenesis. Okay, so these are the table comparing between spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So we can see here, of course, spermatogenesis occurs in testes. This one occurs in ovary and in fallopian tube. Okay, why why we mean by fallopian tube? Because remember the completion of oogenesis, the conversion of um, the um, the maturation of the secondary result to become um, ovum only happen at fallopian tube during fertilization, i.e. during the um, sperm fertilization. So, for uh, one primary spermatocyte undergo meiosis to produce four viable sperm. Mana satu spermatocyte bila sekali buat kerja terus hasil empat. Mana kali on the other hand, one primary oocyte undergo meiosis produce one ovum lagi tiga tu three polar bodies will be gone. Dapat satu, hasilkan satu. Kalau ini satu, hasilkan empat. Cytokinesis is equal. Yang ini cytokinesis is unequal. Okay. Spermatogonia continue to divide by mitosis throughout the reproductive years. Ugonia cannot undergo mitosis, uh, i.e. the cell is amniotic. Meiosis process is uninterrupted. Terus saja. Uh, whereas for this one, the process is interrupted by long resting periods takes years maknanya daripada daripada lahir sampai ada puberty ah baru sambung balik lepas tu dah puberty bila hasil pula aa, tunggu lagi ha, okay so that will be all for this um, part of the video so stay tuned watch the next video for the continuation of chapter uh, 8 okay so again please like um, share this video and subscribe for this channel okay see you on the next video all right